very welcome um, with that. Okay, cool. So let's put our hands together and welcome Pete as he comes up and shares. I need a bit of volume this, this morning. My throat's a little bit gone. Um, just voice is gone, not my throat. My throat's fine. My voice isn't here, that's all. Uh, just getting over something. Don't worry, it's not COVID. Um, <laughs> we know that. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Could you add a bit of you know, authority, gravitas, or something would be really good. <laughs> all the help I can get. But it's so good to be with our God who, yeah, is working. He is working. And uh, I love that song. I didn't know we were going to be playing it this morning, but the sense of waymaker, promise keeper. By definition, God is a God who is working among us. And I wonder if we could put up that first slide there. Hannes, we don't have anybody to click. No, no clicker, but you're my, I'll just press you and you'll, you'll get the next slide up. But uh, this is our, our second or third talk and our kind of focus spotlight on the Holy Spirit. And we wanted to purposely do that. We felt the burden to do that as a church. We've been going through Ephesians. We wanted to go through just understanding, unpacking, introducing aspects of the life of the Spirit and the work of God amongst us. So this is about second or third. And uh, this talk actually should align with your connect groups uh, this coming uh, Wednesday or Thursday because your connect groups will be looking at uh, really a couple of things. I wonder if we could flick it up, Hannes. A couple of things. The new creation or the work of the Spirit in the new creation and the work of the Spirit and what it means to be uh, born into the family of God, the new birth. So those two aspects this week in your connect groups and wanted to just uh, focus on that. These are two ways that the Holy Spirit connects with us, engages with us. Not the only way, but they are two fundamental ways. It's a bit of an intro still this morning, but I wanted to cover some ground that we know is fundamental to who we are as the people of God. I'm going to pray and just ask the Spirit who is already here so beautifully among us. Lord, we thank you for your presence. That Lord, you should be happy to dwell among us is amazing. But you are and you've cleansed us and made your ch us your children. So we say, Holy Spirit, please keep impacting our lives now as we break open these great fundamental truths, the new birth and the new creation. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Okay, for, to kick off, I want to ask you to do something, if you can, and that is for some of you, well, for most of you, I guess, to remember back and back and back to the time the moment when you first open your heart to Christ and you asked Him to come in and be your Lord and Saviour. Now, now for some of you, you may have to reach back decades and decades. Uh, for some of you, you may think, well, I, I always loved Him. I grew up loving Jesus, actually. And then, in other words, it, it may have happened very young. As Peggy was saying earlier, somebody just coming when you're very young and sharing. But I suspect for the majority of us, there was a moment, a crisis, an instant when we came to Jesus and said, please come into my life, forgive me for my sins, cleanse me, be my Lord and Saviour. And there was at that moment when you gave your life to Christ. I wonder for a second, remember back to that time, that place, that context, I wonder what you understood of what was going on at the time. I wonder how much you understood. I think I shared this a few weeks ago. When I gave my life to Jesus, I didn't understand what was going on. I remember going through and praying a prayer and the person who took me through, well, the first thing he said and the last thing he said was, it's okay. If you get run over by a truck, you're going to heaven. Goodbye. And that was basically all I was told. So I knew nothing of what had just happened. But the Bible tells me that at that moment, when you first give your life over to Jesus and ask him in to forgive you for your sins, be your Lord. Look, at that moment, something radical happens to you and in you. New creation happens to you. New birth happens to you. I mean, these aren't, these aren't small phrases, are they? They're not sort of step by step, gradually changing. That's not what this is talking about. Either you're born or you're not. You're, kind of, you're not kind of halfway through, are you? All the mums here can tell you, no, 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 they definitely, when they're born, they're born. It's not a great, well, it is a gradual process in some respect, but no, you know what I mean? It's fundamentally radical, new birth and new creation. They're huge images. And so I, I just want to spend a moment or two unpacking them a bit and see how the Spirit 
works in them in you. All right, that's the plan. All right, so, so first of all, new creation. Where does that phrase come from? Hannes, uh, a number of verses, but the one I want to focus on is uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All right, now, now the question I've got is, what does that really mean here, the new creation? And I just got to say here is that what we have up on the screen is the most well-known uh, uh, way this, uh, the, 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 um, the words are put out there, the, the, the translation. That's the most well-known uh, translation we have. But it may not be the most accurate. I just want to put that one out as well. And in fact, if you want to find a more accurate translation of this, you, you have to look for, dare I say it, the NIV. Uh, those NIV lovers among you going, yes, of course. Uh, those who don't go, oh, boo. But, but actually, the NIV is really helpful here. Put that one up, Hannes, because that says this. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. Can you, can you pick up the difference there? If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. What it's saying is, is that when you give your lives over to Jesus, yes, we are placed into Christ, but also something of Him is placed into us. It's called new creation is placed into us. And uh, it was prophesied about from the Old Testament. So Ezekiel says this, this is God speaking. It will come a day when I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will place my spirit within you and cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. In other words, as we come to Jesus, God puts his spirit within us. And by doing that, he transforms us from the inside. All right, so it's like our old sinful heart, our heart of stone is taken out and he replaces it with a new heart, washed clean, a new inner core that is shaped by and, and occupied by the Spirit of God. And, uh, and this, this work in our heart makes us desire to please Him. And it's very profound because what it means is this, is that what He's deposited in us is, is a, a new redeemed heart that is actually part of this new creation. It's part of the new creation. You see, I just want to explain something for those here who may not know, and it's this. One day, this old creation that we are in, which is wonderful in some respects, but nevertheless, we all agree, is subject to decay and groans and death. This creation is sin-stained. It's an unhappy creation that is longing to be free. And God is saying that one day there will be a new heavens and a new earth as this creation goes. It passes away and one day a new creation will come in and there will be no more sin. It will be a new heavens and a new earth and it will be wonderful. In fact, Revelation 21 puts it like this. this is, it says that God will dwell among us, not just by faith, but by sight. It says God's dwelling place will now be among the people and he will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. That'll be the new creation. New heavens and new earth. What a day that will be. Think about it. No more death. No more sad goodbyes in the corridors of hospitals or airports. No more suffering. No more sickness. No more injustice and horror and misery and sadness. Even as we were praying earlier in the worship, we're praying for those where our hearts were breaking, for those we know who are locked into things that are devastating. And to, one day there'll be none of that. And the glory of God will be fully displayed in this restored creation. It's going to be amazing. And what Paul is saying here is that God is already placing something of that new creation into us now. It's already begun the new has come. 
This is the new heart that has been put in you, a heart containing the Spirit. And this is why the Spirit is referred to in Ephesians as the down payment or first installment of what is to come. Or, or 2 Corinthians 1, Paul says, He's put a seal on us and given us His Spirit in our hearts as a down payment or first installment of what is to come. So the Spirit within us in this new heart is the first installment of heaven. Just think about that for a second. My mum, when I was small, she could bake the most marvellous birthday cakes. She was a great cake baker. In fact, she used to bake cakes for other people's birthday parties. Mums would come to her and she would bake these incredible creations. She'd lock herself in the kitchen, shut the door, and she would create something wonderful, these birthday cakes. And, I, 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 and, the, and the wonderful thing was when it was your birthday, she would bake you this amazing, amazing cake. She was a great cake maker. But because it was your birthday, she gave you this special privilege is that you were able, you were allowed to take the bowl with a cake mix and the icing, <laughs> and you were allowed to just, just scratch it out and then eat what was still left behind. And I still remember as a little boy running off into the lounge with my bowl and licking it up and scraping it and enjoying this wonderful, wonderful mix. Thing is, thing is, as, we, as, as I did that, and if you were doing that, you'd, be, you'd know that you were holding in your little hands really two things. One would be an instalment guaranteeing that more is to come. <laughs> you knew there was a cake baking in the oven and you've got the proof of it because it's in your hands. And the other thing is, you know, as you taste it, you've got a little foretaste of what is to come and you know the finished product will be amazing. Folks, this is what the new creation does. It makes you expectant for the party because it's already in you. It's the presence of the Spirit in you, giving you a flavour, a taster, an assurance that heaven is on the way. It's where you belong and it will be fantastic. That's the work of the Spirit. The first instalment of what is to come is already within you. And this is why we love the Holy Spirit when and however He comes amongst us. We, we love when He comes because we're tasting, we're experiencing, we're enjoying the age to come, or as Hebrew says, the powers of the age to come. You know, those moments, even this morning, as we sense His touch upon us and His intimacy and His tenderness, Sometimes we experience him in his power. He's our way maker, isn't he, Ezra? <laughs> Just say amen from the mouth of babes. <laughs> We're all like Ezra, really, aren't we? Just receiving the Spirit. This is wonderful. We love the Holy Spirit. We're tasting the glories of the age to come. And for us, that age has already begun. It's already been placed inside you. You have the cake bowls. You have the cake bowl. Enjoy tasting it. Scratch out all you can and know that there's more on the way. That's the point. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. That's what new creation means. But listen, it also means something else. It means now the Spirit has come into us. Get this. We are plugged into the heart and mind of God. That may sound a bit of a, a big thing to say. How do you know that? Well, look at 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 12. Paul is writing there about the Spirit. And he says, As it is said, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human heart has conceived, God has prepared these things for those who love Him. Now, God has revealed these things to us by the Spirit, since the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except his Spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who comes from God, so that we may understand what has been freely given to us by God. Now, now, what does all that mean? Well, amongst other things, what it means is this, is that now we have the Spirit, now we have the new creation within us, we have access to the intimate heart and thoughts of God. I mean, Paul even, Paul even compares it to human thinking. 
So he says, for who knows a person's thoughts except his spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. And it's true, isn't it, that, that none of us can know what you're thinking apart from you because you only have that intimacy. So I can look at you all here this morning and I can look at your faces and you know what I see? I see people who are godly and, and hungry for God and thirsty to learn more and wanting to apply all that this preacher is saying. But if I could put your thoughts up on the screen behind me, I think we'd get a range of thoughts, actually. <laughs> Some would be, this is fantastic, keep preaching it, brother, I'm taking it all on board. Other thought might come up that says, roast lamb for lunch. <laughs> when will he finish? <laughs> or, what is clothes sense? It's terrible. Someone needs to talk to him. Or, this is dull, please stop. <laughs> There'd be a whole range of thoughts, a whole range of thinking. You know what I mean? Only you know what's really going on inside your head. You're just very practised at projecting something for the situation. Well, Paul's saying, look, since the new creation has come, since his spirit has come in, we are now plugged into and have access to the thoughts of God. And not like his shallow inklings, but even the depths of God. What no heart or mind has conceived, God shares with us. God is allowing you into by His Spirit. That's the offer. That's the potential. And I guess, I guess the more you give yourself to Him, the more He has opportunity to share with you. Folks, I guess what I'm saying is, let's not settle for a shallow walk with God mm. when so much is offered us. Mm. Amen? Amen? Let's not settle for a tip of the hat when God is saying, I want to show you so much more. Where's my children? They're gone. I, I, want to, I want to show you more of my depths. Again, this is why we love the Spirit. The Spirit reveals the mind of Christ through His Word. Listen, I don't know what you're facing right now back at home. I don't know, you may be very confused. You may be feeling very much in the dark. Where is my job going? Or what will my future hold? Or what about my kids? What's going to happen to them? Or will there be enough money for this? Where is it all going to come from? God, what are you saying to me? I don't know, you may be thinking that. Folks, we don't need to feel confused or alone we can lean into the heart and mind of God. He is a prayer away. His spirit is here. Waymaker, you are working, Lord. That's the truth. That is the truth. You say, well, well, wait a second. I've asked for clarity and he hasn't answered my prayer. Well, maybe your agenda is just slightly different to his. You want to answer to your prayer. God wants you. God wants you to come in deeper, not just settle for a shallow walk where prayers are asked and answered. He wants you in. He wants you closer in. Hallelujah. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. We have access to the heart and mind of God. Hallelujah. What a, what a place we stand. This is incredible. And the second, mighty work, in, the second um, my mighty work of the Spirit, just want to mention, uh, is new birth. That was the other one. I just want to touch on this because as a church, we've been walking through this over the years. New birth is the other thing, this work of the Spirit. John 3 says here that Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again, born of water and the Spirit. Listen, when we put our trust in Jesus, New creation comes and also we are born into the family of God. We become his children, as we've been saying in the worship, sons and daughters. And that was totally foreign in the Old Testament days. Back in the Old Testament, it's true that Israel corporately was referred to occasionally as God's son. But no Old Testament Jew could ever approach God that way until Jesus arrives on the scene. And very early on, he's gathering his disciples around him and he's saying, gather, gather, gather. This is how you should pray then. Our Father who is in heaven. 
That is a radical statement. Our Father, really what he's saying is, is that I'm here to bring you into a new relationship with God. Where you are, he is your Father and, and you are his son or daughter. Amazing that, that God should create such a relationship with us, whereby he takes on the responsibilities of a father and expects you to take on the joys of being a daughter or a son. It's actually really profound. I remember years ago watching a couple, an English couple actually, a documentary, and this is back in the days when the uh, Romanian Marxist government was falling apart. And this English couple wanted to adopt a Romanian child from a Romanian orphanage. And it was a very powerful documentary because I had to jump through so many hoops and sign forms and all they wanted was a child. Eventually the day came and they could go to this orphanage deep in Romania and collect the child that had been allocated to, to, to them. And so they did. On that day, the father, he goes through the entrance and you see him walking through in this big, dark old house, no glass in the windows. It was winter. It was freezing. He's making his way in the darkness down the corridor, goes to the last room, go, opens the door into the room and it's freezing. And he sees a cot. There's no mattress on the cot, just springs. There's no glass in the window, wind coming through the glass. And there's this little baby, hollow-eyed, wrapped up in a rag in the corner of this cot. And you see this father, this new prospective father, and you see what's going on. It was so moving. I remember he went over to the cot and, and he picks up the, this little bundle and raises it to him. And you can see in his face almost, it's like he's saying, I am creating something now between me and you. I am going to be your father. I'm taking that responsibility on. I'm going to nurture you. I'm going to grow you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to love you. And yeah, you'll wind me up sometimes and hurt me, but that's okay. I'm your father. I want you to enjoy being my son. It was so moving. And this is the heart of God. This is the heart of God. This is what he does. It's staggering. I am creating this. This is what God has done with you and me. And the thing is, this new birth is not only brought to us by the Spirit, but it's maintained by the active work of the Spirit too. Deepened by the Spirit because it's through the Spirit that we experience the ongoing fathering of God. So, so Romans 8, you know it well enough. The Spirit you received, Paul says, brought about your adoption to sonship and by Him we cry, Abba, Father. That word Abba is such a beautiful word. It's, it's full of intimacy and respect. Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. In other words, it's the work of the Spirit to assure you deep within that he is your Abba, your Father. It's his responsibility. He's taken it on himself. His heart is to do that very thing. Every time a Spirit comes upon you, it is the Father coming to you with his love. I, I love the way uh, an older Puritan preacher said many years ago in 1660, he describes how this happens. Hannah's just bring it up. It says this. It says, he pictured a man walking along a road hand in hand with his little boy. The little boy knows that this man is his father and that his father loves him. But suddenly the father stops and lifts up his little boy lifts him into his arms, embraces him, kisses him and hugs him. Then he puts him down again and they continue to walk. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to be walking along holding your father's hand, but it is an incomparably greater thing to have his arms enfolded around you. I think that's beautiful. Every time the Holy Spirit is coming upon you, it's the embrace of the Father. He's picking you up, showering His love upon you. The Holy Spirit coming upon you is the Father picking you up and loving you. The Holy Spirit coming upon you is the tender touch of His love and His comfort and His tenderness. Every time you sense His presence, sense the Spirit, it's the Father's embrace. Every time in worship or out of worship, whenever you sense God, that's the father picking up his daughter or his son again. 
The point is, God is not an absentee father. He never was. He never was. He's not loving you from afar either. No, he is near by his spirit. That's why his spirit has come. Many years ago, I remember when my oldest boy, Sam, was about four or five years old, very, very small, and we were driving up to the park. And uh, we got out of the car and, and Sam leapt out and he and ran off into the park. And I was busy getting his bike out or something out of the boot, got it out of the boot, looked up and Sam was gone. I looked over and Sam was running flat out towards another group of little eight-year-olds, eight or nine-year-olds, they're older than him. And they're kicking a ball around between them. And they're kicking around and all Sam sees is ball, game, and he's running towards this group. So he's four or five, they're about maybe eight, nine. And uh, he's running towards them. And I remember the feeling I had as I watched him running. I remember my heart broke, really, because I remember thinking, I prayed at the time, please, God, don't let them hurt him. You know what little boys can be like. And there's this little innocent little boy just wanting to play. And I thought, oh, God, please don't let them swear at him or reject him or shout at him, make him feel small. And I felt so tenderly protective of him. And the worst thing was, well, I put the bike and I began to run after him, but I knew I wouldn't get there in time. And I remember at the time thinking, I wonder if that's how God often feels about us. This tenderness, this heart towards us, wanting to protect and keep us. The difference, of course, is that he's not distant. That's the point. He is very close by his spirit. He is very close. Hallelujah. With such a concern to love you and protect you. I think it's a beautiful thing. And he's just a prayer away. How sad never to know his love like that. How sad. And there are many believers actually who walk through life. And yes, they can tick the boxes. I know God loves me. I know that I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. I go to church every week. But they've never enjoyed the embrace of the Father. True, they walked along hand in hand or walked behind the Father along the country road, but never known him embrace. All the time he was longing to do that very thing. Oh God, what a wonderful privilege we have. He comes to you as we worship. He comes to you as we pray. He comes to you in the night. He's by your bed even while you were sleeping and snoring last night. He was by you, loving you. There's a passage in the Old Testament, I can't remember where it is now, talks about the Father always rising to embrace you. This is our Father. The Spirit is the way that He does that. Amen? Amen. So our job, job, our privilege is to run to Him and to say, come and have your way. Listen, if you've asked Jesus into your life, if you've made that moment, you've, you've brought him in, you say, God, forgive me for my sins. Come and be my Lord and Saviour. He is within you. You are a new creation. The old sinful heart is gone. The new has come. The first instalment is here. You're on your way to heaven. If you were to die right now, you'd simply walk into glory because on the inside, you're ready for that now. That's what he's done. The new creation has come. His spirit is within you and he is your father who longs to embrace you, who's given his spirit for that very purpose to bring healing even as he does. Miracle, brings miracles, he keeps his promises. Sorry, it's just about gone. He wants to shower his love upon you. Can we stand? <coughs> Mark, I wonder, that song, he does bring miracles. He is a promise keeper. <coughs> Do you mind, Esther? When you sang that song earlier, I thought, my God, it's so good. It's so affirming of what we know to be true about this new creation. And I just wonder whether even as we sing, we open our hearts to the one who works miracles. His spirit is here. I don't know what you're facing, but I do know this. The new creation has come and His Spirit is here to bless.
I wonder if we sang this. It's a great song to position ourselves. You are here. That's the declaration. You are here. Can we just sing this maybe once or twice? And as you do, open your hearts to the Father. Some of you have been walking a long way, beside Him or behind Him. He's always longed to embrace you, pour out His Spirit upon you, give you strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heaven has come. Already with you now. Taste from the bowl. Receive more of the joy. You get a glimmer now, one day you'll see it in all its fullness. But the glimmer is powerful, life transforming, fortifying, healing and encouraging. Can we sing it together? Thanks, Mike.